Hello everyone, this is Jenny Gibbons of Woodsy Studio, and this is part four of the Making a Visual Novel in UE4 tutorial. And in part one through three, we set up a basic scene, um, we made blueprints to interpret the scene uh, as a data table, we made an NPC actor that would launch the scene, and we created a widget to display the text. But now it's time to uh, test all of that out, and if we get the first line to work correctly, then we play the second line, and then we close out the scene. All right, so theoretically, we've got something that will launch the first line and display it now. Uh, one more thing we need to do. Uh, I've gone back up here to where we created the widget. Um, you always have to add widgets to the viewport if you actually want them to show. Kind of a weird little quirk that took me a while to get used to. You can give it a Z order if you want, like if you have several things showing at once, you could uh, stack them up with the Z order, but zero is fine for us. And I think it's time to see if this actually works. All right, so I'm gonna minimize that. I'm gonna go in. Oh, we have an error. Let's see, it's in our scene template. It just needed to compile a couple times. That happens if you go too long without compiling. It just kind of needs to catch up with itself. I'm gonna save all. Try this again. And look, it worked. So I clicked on Sally, and that first line played. Uh, so yay! All of the different elements are speaking to each other as we hoped, and are launching this scene. Obviously, right now. Nothing happens yet uh, when we click again. So let's go back in to our scene template. This is playing that first line. Let's make a variable here called row finished. And again, this is a, the, a variable that may not seem very important right now. But um, as you get deeper into things, uh, this is going to be useful. Actually, I should just set it. Right now, our row is going to display right away. So as soon as this goes through, it's going to be finished. And I'm going to say over here that right when it starts, it's not finished. So the main reason I'm doing that is um, if we start to add effects, like our uh, text shows up um, character by character, kind of in a typewriting style, or if we have like a little effect that we play um, in the middle of the text, then um, this is just going to track that, hey, we're still playing the line. Don't go to the next one yet. So. And actually, um, since we don't have anything in between there right now, I'm going to add a little delay. And sometimes you just need to do this so Unreal doesn't get ahead of itself. Like this is all happening based on one click, and it's happening really, really fast. So uh, it's really possible that it, that it could fire twice if you're not careful. So I'm going to put a little delay in here. Um, Let's even make it one second, just to be safe. So that at least that line is going to show for one second. And we want the next line to play when we uh, click again. So let's go to File, I'm sorry, Edit, Project Settings. We're going to go down to Input. We're going to make an action mapping for this. New line. Or let's, next line. And 
for now, I'm just going to tie it to the uh, left mouse button. And let's go ahead and put the enter button on it too. So you could press either enter or left mouse button to go to the next line. So now we have those in here as inputs. If we search for it in our blueprint, we can reference that input. So if pressed, we're going to look for that row finished variable. If the row is finished, then play the next row. And in our case, uh, this is all still very simple. We just want it to go to the next line. So we're going to get row. We're going to add one. And then we just want it to play the next line. So play line. Oh, we actually need to set this. So all we're doing here is if it reads the input of clicking the key and we know the row is finished, then add one to the row and play the line again. All right, let's see if that works. And I click on her, click again. Oh, did not work. All right, so on my first attempt, uh, the second line did not play, but I realize that's because by default, all the inputs go through your player controller uh, slash character here. And in this case, we're getting the uh, scene template to respond to the input. So in order for that to work, um, I'm gonna go over here to the event begin play. I'm gonna tell it to enable input and we have to hook that up to get player controller. So basically we're enabling this blueprint to uh, consume input right when it's created. All right, so let's try this again. Play. Wait a minute. And next line. All right, so that's working. Right now, uh, it's having trouble uh, figuring out what to do when uh, it reaches the end. And yes, Unreal is like, hey, um, we didn't find anything else after those first two rows. So let's go over here to the play line. And let's have it check each time um, if we've reached the end. So we're going to pull from the array of rows. We're going to look for the length. And we want, um, let's move all this over a little bit. So the row is greater than or equal to the length, um, we want the false to play the line. If that is true, we want it to end the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and create a custom event. Um, in our case, this is just going to be simply ba like destroying the actors that we created. But as you get further along, you might want more things to happen when the scene is over. So I'm going to create a new event for it. Say in scene. And that gets triggered here. So the end scene, we're going to need to destroy the widget we made. 
Um, for widgets that you say remove from parent to get that to go away. So we're just we'll destroy the widget. We will um, destroy this actor, destroy self, or destroy actor, which is going to be itself. And so we also want the touch click actor to know that a scene is no longer playing. So there are a few different ways you could go about this. Um, I'm going to enable the scene template to track what character launched it. And for a larger scale project, it might be better to have your character holding that variable. Um, I think that's actually how we do it in um, our projects. But either one will work for our purposes right now. So we're just going to make sure that everything knows to shut down when the scene is over. And really, that's kind of your preference, how you want to set that up. So let's have the scene template keep track of what launched it. So we'll make a new variable here called npc or scene starter actor. And that's going to be npc touch click actor. And so when this first gets created, we're going to tell, we're, we're going to set it here, scene starter. as self. So again, right now this may seem like overkill, but um, as you keep going, there are lots of reasons that you just want to keep track of, of uh, all the different actors you've got on the screen and create a variable to reference them. Uh, just so you know, you can always find something by saying get all actors of class like, if I just wanted to search, instead of making a variable, I wanted to search for the scene template, for instance, I could do that. And I could say, get, get the first instance, and is that valid? So on and so forth. Um, I'm not doing that. But I, I prefer to make variables uh, in this case because, for one, it's uh, simpler. And the other reason is this actually takes up a bit of uh, performance, um, it, uh, of processing power. So if you run this frequently, you will actually see a hit on your frame rate and that sort of thing. So I just tend to avoid using that when I can. And in these cases where I'm probably going to keep referencing these different objects, I'm just making them variables instead. So all of that to say that when we first make a scene, we're going to tell the scene um, what launched it. And at the very end, it's going to get a reference to that and tell it that the scene is no longer playing. Turn that back to off. OK. So let's see if this works. So we've got our character here. I'm moving just with the input because that's what's in the, or with the arrow keys because that's what the template lets me do. When I click, the scene starts, go to each line. When I reach the end, it destroys itself, it closes out, and it should let me start it again if I click again, yep. So we can keep playing the scene. So I'm gonna wrap up there for this tutorial and um, obviously there's a lot more we can do with this. We can have the character sprites actually show up on the screen and respond with expressions um, and all sorts of fancy stuff like that. And uh, depending on if y'all are interested in that, I will keep making tutorials to teach you how to do that. But for now, I hope you all find this useful as a basis for building visual novels.
And uh, right now we are working on Echoes of the Fae, The Last Sacrament, and we've got a Kickstarter for it, and I hope you will support us and our games uh, via Kickstarter. So thanks everyone, let me know what you thought.